Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and people of YouTube. Well, I thought we would spend some time and look at this Craigslist Dodge Ram a little closer. I gave you a little short clip of this in the last video and didn't really look at it too close. Uncle Phil was here, so we were just having a good time cutting up as we always do. So I thought we would just take some time to look over this, and this is going to be more of an in depth thing. So this is. A 99, a 1999 Dodge Ram for the 318 and a 46RE transmission in it. It's 1300 bucks. It has 211,000 miles on it. So let's just see what we got here. We'll start with our favorite place under the hood. First thing you notice, this thing has a large transmission cooler on it, and that is a large transmission cooler for us. Just a regular old pickup, and I'm glad to see that because this is the Achilles heel of these 518 46RE transmissions is that they don't run cool enough. So I'm glad to see that. I hope that means that the transmission is being uh, rebuilt at some point. It's got this uh, cold air box on it. And uh, I just, I'm probably going to replace this because I know it adds a little power possibly, but it's a Spectre, and Spectre to me just screams cheap redneck stuff like from the parts store, so I don't like the looks of it. I don't like that it's metal right here because this is right above the exhaust manifold and metal absorbs heat. So what's the good of having a cold air induction box over here, which is what that is, if it's sucking in through a hot tube? And yes, that sounds kind of dirty. So that's probably going to come off, and we're just going to put on a regular air box, which has got the one that's got the filter housing over here, and just a plastic thing, and it'll give a little bit more room in here and look a little bit less gaudy. And this is just a Magnum 318, like it's in a million of these trucks and vans. And I've had a couple work vans, two or three or four work vans with this on here. and with this on here looking at something else so I was talking with this engine and I've always been impressed with this engine I think it's a great engine and this one runs pretty doggone good for the miles it has and the care it's probably had over its lifetime it doesn't seem to smoke it doesn't make any noise so I think we're pretty good on that front it's got a little history with it I noticed over here that in conjunction with this uh, transmission cooler that they have abandoned the lines out of the radiator which you can see here's one here it goes down and it kind of comes back and then sort of ends right down there and the other one down there doesn't have anything attached to it anymore normally what they do is you run it from the transmission to the radiator and then to the cooler, external cooler, and then back to the transmission. But this will work. It'll be all right. And they've done something a little interesting with the lines here that looks a little flaky. I've got a joint here that's it's where they've patched the metal lines into rubber lines, and this is not done very well. It's got a couple hose clamps on each one of them really the bad kind of hose clamps and then it's got a looks like a what do they call those joints right there fittings whatever that's that's not good so but it doesn't appear to be leaking at this point so i'll we'll probably just let it ride for now uh, the air works on it geez knock on wood it's got a nice sanding compressor on it i don't know if that's the factory compressor i hope well, I don't know if it is or not. It works good, though. So, I noticed that. I don't know if it's ever had a radiator put in it, but it's got... Yeah, it probably has. That's one of those aftermarket stickers. It's got a warrant. That's a warranty sticker. It says warranty void if you screw it up. <laughs> and, yes, that is indeed a shoestring holding the battery in. I don't know if that's a waxed shoestring or just a regular shoestring, but it is a shoestring. 
Now, it's, again, that's one of those things that I, just for the life of me, don't quite understand why that Chrysler would went to the trouble of putting in a metal battery hole down when the shoestring works just as well. Now, he said he put this battery in it. Uh, I don't know how old this battery actually is. It should have a sticker on it someplace. It does. 11 and 16. But it does not sound either like the strongest battery or the strongest starter in this truck. In fact, take a listen right here. This is a cold start and then kind of tell you what I'm talking about. It's kind of sounds a little sluggish. Okay, yeah, you heard that, and it just doesn't sound too awful healthy. And I don't know if that's the battery or the starter. My money is probably going to be on the starter. Uh, these battery cables look terrible. They've got these cheap ends on them, and it doesn't even matter if they are painted black and red or supposed to be red. They're still cheap. They're still terrible. It's got this. Look at that. Guys, don't do that. Don't hack up a battery cable like that. New replacements are not that expensive. And it's got a good coating of mud all over it, unfortunately. Yep. Yep. This hood insulation is about trashed. And one thing you may have noticed, it didn't do it as much this time, but when I started it the other day, I, I noticed right away it did not have a fast idle. It just idled real slow and it was cold and normally these are supposed to rev up, you know, and run on fast idle for a couple dozen seconds at the very least, and this one's not doing that, so it kind of straightens out when it warms up, so I'm probably have to dig into that. The grill is foobard. The, uh, looks to me like all the mounts broke off those up there who would have done such a thing man so anyway that's the good thing it doesn't look like it's been uh, piled up it looks old and original and that's pretty good so it is indeed a 99 let's look at the Kind of, we we kind of covered the outside of it, but just a lot of dents and stuff. And the tires on it, you guys are so observant. Y'all always notice tires and stuff, and I'm impressed by that. These tires on the face of it, they look good, and they are. The tread looks fine on them for what they are, but these tires are actually two different sizes front to rear this one is a 265 70 16 that's what's on the rear of it which is the wrong size at least on this truck it's supposed to have a 245 75 16 that's what's on the front of it and I was looking at the the uh, I'm not sure about this. This is one of these. I guess I may have to get on the inside of this tire and look up the whole code. But uh, these tires, like I said, they're pretty old. I think the other ones are like 10 years old. And this one's got a plug right here, which is leaking. When I was washing it, it was leaking. Yeah, you know, it's banged up back here. I always get them right under the back of the bed, seems like. It's banged up there. It's got a receiver hitch, I think that's I think that's what that is. Let's take a look. Yeah. It's got a draw type receiver hitch, that's good. That is a nine and a quarter inch rear end, which is an open, non-sure grip rear end with 355 gears in it. That's the gas tank up there. Everything seems to look pretty good back here. 
Now, I can tell you for a fact that's not what you're supposed to use in that. <laughs> and the damn thing's not even tight. That's a carriage bolt. Somebody has, Jesus. You know, I, I've, I've had so many of these things, I've just about, nothing shocks me, but that, that comes close. <laughs> yeah. Guys, when you put your receiver in here, into this, this is a 5,000 pound receiver hitch. <laughs> this thing, this carriage bolt that you got at the hardware store or someplace else, that's not 5,000 pound capable. Okay, please don't put that in there. Just because it's straight and long and it's got a washer on it and a nut and it goes in, that does not mean you're supposed to use it. Okay. Anyway, well, well I got something to fix that. So, the bumper's not bad. It's not tweaked too bad. It's got a, looks like somebody hooked a chain to it right here and gave it a yank. One of the tag bolts is missing. Yes, that's my license plate number. Go ahead and look it up. I don't give a damn. So, somebody, one of you guys had said something, uh, kind of a comment I found a little bit interesting. You said somebody cared enough to paint the inside of the bed. Well, they sort of did. That is latex paint residue. Somebody was carrying paint in here because there's all kinds of, you look on the back, they, you might have said that in jest. I, I get it now, maybe, but. If you didn't, this is actually latex paint. So somebody has <laughs> had it going as a painter mobile, I guess. But the bed's not in too bad a shape. It's really not banged up as bad as it could be. The, the tailgate is, that Ford I had, that F-150, the last one, uh, the tailgate was like this shape because it's so much stuff had slid back and hit it and the front of the bed. So this one's not that bad. Of course, got another dent under there. Got something up here, caught this at the fender, I guess. I don't know. What would have done that? I don't know if a tire did that. What in the world? I'm just glad this thing didn't have a V6 in it. Yeah. Just, you know, your usual stuff. There's just dents everywhere on it. It is what it is. And we've been under here before, and I'm not trying to rub salt in you guys' wounds or anything, but. Uh, I think to a degree some of y'all are kind of fascinated by the frames on stuff like this so we'll take a look under the back of this underneath it and I was meaning to tell you also that uh, when you about salt the I guess the the sort of the rough cutoff line as far as coming down south as far as when we start encountering cars that are kind of rusting from salt is somewhere around Nashville, just a little bit north of Nashville, they start using salt because you occasionally, if I go to that pull apart up there, I'll see cars in there starting to rust, but it's not, you know, our winters are still pretty mild even up there, so you just don't see that much of it. Of course, there's no spare tire. <clears throat> oh, I know how that works. Now, I was, I was going to have to educate myself on how that crank works but I see now how it's supposed to work. I don't know that I have the handle to it though. Like I said the tailpipe's missing. It's got the hanger. I guess that's the hanger for it over there but the tailpipe is missing. Yeah I don't think that's a sure grip rear end or anything like that. Don't know about the fuel pump. All I can tell you is at this point is that it's working. Yep. It's got a code on that gas uh, tag on that. We'll take a little bit of a look up at the front, which we kind of did already. We'll look again.
And you know, it just is what it is. I mean, you know, thirteen hundred dollars gets you. In my uh, in my experience, it just basically gets you one thing or the other. It either gets you something that looks like crap and runs pretty good, or it gets you something that looks okay but you know don't run too good. It's got the converter still on it, which oh geez, yeah, look at that. <laughs> There's a gotcha. Look at that cross member. You see that? Get the light back on it. What did somebody hit with that cross member? It's actually hit it so hard that it has pulled it backwards a little bit. Good lord. Well, looks like that thing unbolts over there, so I guess I'll end up replacing that at some point. But it has to be. That's a, that muffler is a, it's supposed to be a Flowmaster. It sure, sure don't look like one though. I mean, it sure don't sound like one. I've had a bunch of Flowmasters and that one don't sound like one. <clears throat> Just kind of looking at this front end a little bit. You guys holler if you see something bad. I was looking especially at these ball joints. See anything scary? It looks like it's had. Uh, it's got made in Mexico shocks on it. I don't know what that means exactly. Well, I know what it means. I just don't know what the significance of it is. It's kind of peered under there. Yeah, that transmission looks pretty clean. So. It's, Kind of all, yeah, it's all painted. <clears throat> look, take a look at here. It's got uh, you see how the oh, that light ain't too bright for you, but that case is. Let me turn this light down a little bit. What you're looking at, you're looking at one of the pressure taps for one of the servos, and that thing I'm looking at is, and I can tell this transmission's been painted gray all over so it's probably a reman of some sort okay yeah it's got a nice uh, what are we looking at it's got a nice expensive super tech oil filter on it It's pretty clean. The only thing I see that looks a little questionable is whatever that is. That's the, uh, what are we looking at here? I guess that's just the jounce bumper. Yeah, that's just the bumper. But of course, to check all this thoroughly, I have to get it jacked up and, and go off. Well, you guys can't even see, can you? too bad in there. You can't tell that anything's been apart on it. Oh yeah, while we're over here, I think this is the oldest tire here. You see how that, see how it has that old rubber look? <laughs> now this is the right, correct size tire on it. That's a 245, 75, 16. At least they're not as hellaciously expensive as the ones on that F-150 were. Yeah, it's kind of. But I think these things are 10 years old if we look over here. What's that say? No, oh, they're more than that. This one's 3905 and I, I would say this is not 2015 because they sure don't look two years old. No, that's not, that's not 390. There's not 390 days in a year, is there? You idiot. That is probably the 39th week of 05. Or 39th day. Hell, I don't know. You guys figure it out. Uh, the tread's good on them, but I'd be afraid to drive on them. 
you know, because tires get old and they just, I don't know, they'll come apart. There you go. It's got something kind of banged up over here. Yes, 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 yes. Banged up. We love banged up things. Okay. All right. The, the swipe bar links look good. And, you know, it wasn't making any weird noises. That's the thing that was interesting about it. It didn't drive very well. Now, one of the tires is extremely, well, actually, all the tires are extremely low. They have between about 20 and 25 pounds of air, and they're supposed to have 44. So, it does drive better, but it's got, it's just the steering feels weird on it. It feels like it's not trying to return like it should. And who knows? Somebody might have been into the, yeah, there's a better view of that transmission. And this is basically just a 727 with overdrive on it. The overdrive is in that unit back there. That's normally where just the tail shaft is. But that thing houses a that thing houses a overdrive unit. So I guess theoretically theoretically you could put a 727 in this, but you'd have problems hitting the computer wouldn't like it. Yeah, look at that mount. That thing has actually pulled that almost pulled that mount apart. It's not all the way apart, but... Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Oops. Sorry. Yeah, I'll get this thing. It hasn't been lubricated in a while. I'll get this thing jacked up at some point here soon. Probably over the weekend. And take a closer look at this but for right now let's go look at this let's go look at this steering box up here Residence. Mm. Yeah. You know what? what happened there's the outer arm over there Get an arm over here. Let's get in a better position. Still not in a better position. Huh. Well, it's still bolted to the frame, and the frame's not broke. Sorry about that, I hit a button wrong. Uh, I said it's still bolted to the frame, and the frame's not broke, so. At least it doesn't look like anything's been tampered with. I'd rather see just old original stuff. Well, like I said, we'll get, I see some space between that, that drag link and that pitman arm right there, like it's been moving. We'll investigate that further. I guess the last thing I want to look at and see if, uh, as soon as the far as the outside of it goes, I'll see if it's had a starter put on it that I can tell. Uh, yeah, I don't know. At least it's easy to get to. That's one thing about that dark that I don't miss. I mean, I kind of miss the car in a way, but uh, that uh, that thing was so hard to work on under here. Now, I don't know about the starter. It probably has been replaced at least once. So if you guys see anything that jumps out at you, you just let me know for sure, because I value your input for sure. I think I'll go in the morning and make a junkyard run. 
So I'm going to get myself out from under here and we're going to look around the interior of this thing a little bit. I tell you what, it takes a brave man or woman to enter the realm of a Craigslist used car interior. And this one is no exception. Just about anything you can ever find wrong with a Craigslist vehicle inside, it's got it. It's not as bad as I've ever seen. I don't think anything's ever going to top that Toyota Echo. That, that thing set a, a very high benchmark of nastiness. That dude that owned that car, he was the king of nasty. Everybody else is sort of nasty. They're under him. He's, he's the all-time greatest nasty person. Good God, can you imagine being his wife? Ugh. I mean, I can't imagine being anybody's wife, but some pig like that. And just admit it, and just admit it, some of you guys are like that. Just admit it. You know you are. We won't name names, and I don't know, but... but deep down, secretly, you know you want to be that nasty. You know it. So anyway... The door panel, this door panel is pretty uh, done for. It has the usual problems. It's got random screws holding it to the door, which that's not what you put the door panel on with. It's supposed to have clips. Clips appear to be missing, mostly. It's got some screws here. This thing has got a lot of stuff going on with it. It's got breakage. It's got rust. Uh, the door panel has the usual ground in sweat scratches I mean I didn't expect anything different but I'm just pointing it out it has the Craigslist uh, map pockets of doom which I've actually already cleaned out because I was just too scared to even look at them anymore and there's still some nice filth residue in there from something I don't know you can tell me what you think that is at that That may be a clip still on there, I don't know. Door handle works. They didn't manage to break the door handle off. It's missing at least a couple of clips up there. Those little push pin things. Got that going on and I did not detect that any of the front speakers work. Uh, moving along, we already saw the dash. The dash is bad. The dash is beyond bad. Lee one. <laughs> How many cars do you ever see that you can actually just look down in the back of the instrument panel from the top without having to remove anything? So this is about a $400 bill to replace this. I figure my chances of finding anything usable at the junkyard are between negative 10 and zero. But I'll at least try. These things were restyled. The interior is restyled for 97 on up through 2001. So you got a few years to choose from. But I don't harbor any uh, expectations that I'm going to find something. So anyway, that is what it is. Steering wheel. Yeah, got the usual stuff. You know, people that drive cheap vehicles, it seems like they like to take their anger out on the steering wheel. Got a hole there, some sort of something's dug into it. Got another hole right there. It looks like somebody may have jabbed a knife or a screwdriver into the leather. Uh, the leather has been taped up with uh, electrical tape. Has the Foose steering wheel cover on it. I'm going to just tell you something. There's, there's one th I'm not overly germaphobic, but if there's one thing that just grosses me out about stuff like this, it's one of these steering wheel covers. I just you know, I don't want to think about where the hands have been on this steering wheel cover have been previous to or during that time frame. I don't want to think about that. It makes me throw up. So it's got a stereo cassette player, which does work. I haven't tested the cassette, and I don't plan to. It's got a airbag control, climate control. You sell that. It's got an ashtray. Not bad. I've seen a lot worse in the ashtray department. Got the books with it. No interesting papers, though. Uh, it's got one of those, uh, what's that sporting goods st sticker there? It's on the mirror. 
that's another thing I can't stand is people stick stuff on mirrors. This thing up here, this is the fancy uh, map light thing and apparently none of this works anymore. At least the lights don't work. It's got this, that's still okay. Uh, that can't be good. That's got a screwed ribbon into it. So, <laughs> that's the neighbor trimming his yard. So, okay, I don't know what that's about. I guess the latch broke and they got tired of it hanging down. Headliners, it's done. Rips, stains, holes, discoloration, it has it all. The carpet, believe it or not, the carpet I think can be saved. It's got the usual grease, but it's not got any holes in it, believe it or not, for no, uh, no uh, formats in it. It's not worn out that bad, so I think I'm going to try to save it. I'm going to up my game, and I'm going to get a pressure washer and pressure wash the crap out of this carpet after I take it out. The seat, well, there it is. This side ain't too good. The other side's okay. The middle's okay. This is a split bench. So I'm confident that I can take this seat out and figure out how to get this part out away from it and just go find a better one. <laughs> Let's all laugh together, shall we? So anyway, somebody's big old ass has worn this seat out like they always do. It's actually worn the paint off this metal part in here. Good Lord. And that. I don't want to touch this or it just don't. Uh, this seat is funny because the guy said this seat over here is leaning. It's leaning. It's leaning over. <laughs> that's what happens when you beat the heck out of it. When you kill it with your ass, that's what it does. So it's got this thing that they promoted back here. This is a little storage thing. This is all going to come out and be cleaned up. This is way, way too funky for me. So. That's what I'm going to do this afternoon. I'm going to just work on getting the carpet and stuff and the seats out of it. And I took the home stereo sub thing out of it and threw it in the garbage. It was tied into the... It was tied in somewhere back here. I don't know. I guess I took that off. I don't know. So, anyway, the one thing, uh, one of you guys pointed out an interesting thing you can do about getting the options for your Chrysler vehicle and I actually one step ahead of you I found a link to that on the internet and I went and did it and I found out this truck's probably somebody kicked the window or busted the window out because it's supposed to have a sliding glass window and it does no longer have that so but anyway you know it is what it is just a cheap old truck I, I was mentioning this briefly that I really like the way these I really like the way these short bed trucks like this look. I wanted one like this. I almost bought one of these about seven years ago, but they wanted too much for it. So we will do our usual thing. We will just kind of get some junkyard parts and just lightly spruce this up and make some repairs to it and just use it. And maybe this will be the one that sticks around for a good long time, or maybe it won't. You just never know. But Actually, <laughs> my hand was kind of forced on getting this thing put together because I kind of had a little incident with the car over there. I'll tell you more about that later. So, for in the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour. And I will bring you along as we do a little bit more this old Dodge Ram and uh, we'll see where we go with this somebody was asking me they said do you, do you not want an older one well I look for an older one and all the older D series around here this is the 90 uh, 90 what 90 3's on down are just beat to hell, excuse my language. I mean, just beat, beat, beat down here. You just can't find a good one. I almost, I found one I wanted, but I didn't have my dart sold yet, so I had to pass on it, but it was an 89 uh, long wheel base, single cab D150, and it had a 360 with a 
four-speed manual transmission in it. No, uh, it's kind of interesting that, but I like this. It's okay, guys. Appreciate you watching, and always feel free to comment. And even if you don't agree with what I do, I'm interested in hearing your viewpoints as long as you're not too abusive about it. So, uh, pull up a chair and sit a spell. Thanks for watching. Take the damn handle of oh, this son of a bitch. Mm. Take the handle off what, Phil? This scraper I got. <laughs> <laughs>